Mr. Harut, I assume he's an Armenian, I think there was Professor Demirjan that already mentioned his name. But he's an Armenian-American writer, public activist, and publisher of the California Courier, Sassoonian's weekly opinion column. So, uh, Mr. Sassoonian was invited to this symposium too, but uh, unfortunately he could not attend due to risk developments in the Lindsay Foundation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My paper will be an expanded version of an art article I wrote nine months ago proposing the creation of a democratically elected structure that would represent all seven million Armenians in the diaspora. Unity is not a novel idea. Armenians have always expressed a dream for unity through fiery speeches, patriotic songs, and nationalistic poems, such as the immortal words of Yerushe Charents, Ov hai jogovurt, ko miyak pergutyuna, ko havakagan uji meche. O Armenian people, your salvation lies only in your collective power. However, the very fact that Armenians constantly dwell on unity is a clear indication that their most cherished dream remains unattained. Despite all the talk about unity, Armenians have remained at odds with each other and have marched to the beat of different drummers, even at the most perilous times of their history. In recent years, however, a growing number of Armenians have come to the realization that a collective effort is necessary if they are to survive as a dispersed ethnicity detached from its homeland. Gradually, Armenian communities are swallowed up by the irresistible tide of assimilation. Many Armenian schools in Europe and North America, established after large-scale migrations in recent decades from the Middle East and Armenia, are having difficulty attracting new students and risk closing down. Armenian churches are mostly attended by the elderly. Fewer young men and women are joining the ranks of traditional Armenian organizations. As a result, Armenian communities in different parts of the world, in varying degrees, are losing their vibrancy and distinct cultural identity. These communities are following the tragic trend of older Armenian settlements in Eastern Europe and the Far East, which vanished without leaving a trace. In addition to the need to preserve their culture, Armenians around the world share a common quest for justice from Turkey and a commitment for the security and economic prosperity of the twin republics of Armenia and Artsakh. In pursuit of such lofty goals, the Armenian government, as well as groups and individuals around the world, have sought various ways to coordinate their efforts. They have reached the proper conclusion that a small nation divided into countless fragments cannot survive very long, let alone thrive. They have come to the realization that they can benefit immensely from, pool, from pooling their limited resources and jointly tackling similar problems faced by all communities. As a result, some preliminary successes have been registered in coalition building. Both the worldwide Hayastan All Armenian Fund and the US-based United Armenian Fund, consisting of a coalition of multiple Armenian organizations, have carried out large-scale humanitarian work in Armenia and Artsakh in a coordinated and efficient manner for the past 20 years. Two years ago, the Armenian government established a diaspora ministry in order to serve as a bridge between Armenians scattered throughout the world and their homeland. Among other efforts, the ministry has held several conferences in Yerevan bringing together various Armenian professional groups. There have also been diaspora-based unity schemes. Some have sought to rally Armenians worldwide around common political, social, or legal initiatives. Others have appointed representatives in different communities or formed coalitions of existing community organizations. While it is highly desirable for Armenians to continue making such attempts, in order to find the best possible mechanism for coordinating their activities within each community, as well as globally, 
It would be ironic and counterproductive if these unity schemes themselves end up causing further splits within our communities. In the quest for the optimum modality for unity, I would like to present my own framework, hoping that eventually the best ideas would survive and all those interested in unity would eventually come together. This proposal is based on several years of reflection and lengthy discussions with respected individuals and community leaders throughout the world. This plan is based on the twin concepts of legitimacy and democracy. It envisages the establishment of a democratically elected body that would represent Armenians throughout the diaspora, except those in Armenia and Artsakh who already reside in a state structure and are represented by their respective governments. For the first time in diaspora's history, Armenians around the globe would have the opportunity to elect their own representatives or leaders on the basis of one man, one vote. To form a structure that represents the estimated 7 million Armenians in the diaspora, elections should be held via regular mail, email, or in person on the basis of the following formula. <coughs> Candidates meeting certain pre-established qualifications would seek to represent, for example, 20,000 Armenian voters in a given electoral district. Pre-registered voters of Armenian origin would have to be at least 18 years old and have a verifiable electronic or mailing address in their electoral district. They could then participate in the elections regardless of their citizenship, country of origin, and religious or political affiliation. If a country with a large Armenian population in multiples of 20,000 individuals, several, I'm sorry, in a country with a large Armenian population in multiples of 20,000 individuals, several individuals would be elected from that country, each of them representing 20,000 Armenians. In sparsely populated regions of the world, where 20,000 Armenians may be spread over several countries, one elected individual would represent the Armenians in all those countries. Initially, there may be a low turnout of voters. However, as the new structure gains strength and legitimacy, succeeding elections would attract more participants. Elections do not have to be carried out simultaneously throughout the diaspora. They could be held initially in one country or region to test the feasibility of the electoral procedures in this regard. I'm sorry. In this regard, I welcome the plan recently approved by French Armenian organizations to hold popular elections next year so that Armenians in France could elect their representatives. The next speaker, Dr. Gaitz Minassian, will present to you the details of the French Armenian plan. Returning to my own proposal, it is important to note that only those elected by the Armenian public at large can truly state that, that they represent Armenians residing in their districts, unlike other organization, organization leaders who can only represent their own membership. Consequently, the collective body of 350 elected representatives from all electoral districts throughout the diaspora, representing 20,000 Armenians each, is the only entity that can legitimately claim to represent all 7 million Armenians worldwide outside of Armenian Artsakh. Popular elections would not only grant legitimacy to those elected, but would also encourage the participation of a greater, greater number of Armenians in community activities. This would be a dramatic shift from the current situation in our communities where a small number of individuals work around the clock sacrificing their time and effort while the majority of Armenians who are not affiliated with any organization remain disengaged and disinterested. Large number of Armenians would feel empowered and energized for the first time if they act actively participate in choosing their own representatives or leaders. This collective body of 350 elected representatives would deal with all aspects of Armenian life. It would elect its chairperson or speaker and have committees and subcommittees dealing with such important, all-encompassing issues such as culture, language, religion, education, budget and finance, international affairs, Armenian minority rights, relations with Armenia and Artsakh, genocide, and demands from Turkey. This body would, could meet once a year and adopt decisions on the basis of majority vote 
or on certain critical issues by a two-thirds majority vote. Decisions thus taken would reflect the views of the entire diaspora, not just a particular group or community. The currently existing Armenian organizations would continue to function as before with no hindrance or competition from this new transnational entity. In fact, the existing groups could expand their reach and increase their clout by lobbying the elected representatives of this new elect collective body to adopt their respective agendas. Since today's diaspora leaders are prominent members of, of their communities, it would not be surprising at all to see many of them elected to this new body by popular vote. One of the objectives of this new structure would be to gain NGO status at the UN and other regional and international entities having the right to represent all Armenians in the diaspora. The representatives of this new body could also play a useful role when interacting with government officials. For example, if officials of a given country would like to meet with representatives of their Armenian community, there would be no need for endless acrimonious disputes among Armenians as to who should go to such a meeting as the true representative of the community. Furthermore, Armenian government officials as well as foreign leaders would know whom to contact when they need to speak with representatives of the diaspora. This new structure could also endorse candidates in local or national elections. Such endorsement would be particularly important when multiple Armenian candidates are running for the same office as recently happened in Glendale, causing the split of the Armenian vote and consequently the defeat of all Armenian candidates. This representative body could end such internal disputes by endorsing the most qualified candidate. Before embarking on this ambitious initiative of creating such a rep representative structure, three important steps must be undertaken. First, a team of researchers or scholars must study how the Greek, Italian, Jewish, and Lebanese diasporas, for example, are organized in order to learn from their experiences. These scholars would then formulate the optimum mechanism to conduct elections worldwide, estimating the number of Armenians in each community and country, the qualifications of voters and candidates, and measures to prevent voter fraud. They could also propose significant details about the structure and function of the collective body, such as meeting procedures, committees and subcommittees, recall procedures, term limits, electing chairs and vice chairs. Today's symposium is an initial attempt to make such an academic assessment. Secondly, long before organizing elections and announcing plans to establish a new structure, those studying the feasibility of such a concept must contact the leaders of influential Armenian organizations to discuss with them the prospects of forming such a structure, get their input, and assess the potential for conflict or cooperation. And finally, the initiators of this concept should brief government officials in Armenia and Artsakh about the objectives of this initiative and assess their degree of support for such a structure. While this is a diasporan initiative, if and when the newly elected body is organized, its representatives would regularly consult and interact with officials in Armenia and Artsakh. It is critical to maintain the independence of this diaspora-wide body in order to shield Armenian officials from being pressured by foreign powers to influence the decisions of the new entity. I know that what I'm proposing is very difficult to accomplish. If it were easy, it would have been done a long time ago. However, we must bear in mind that difficult tasks are the ones worth tackling because, if successful, they bear the most fruit. If Armenians are capable of establishing a transnational structure composed of elected representatives, they would be creating for the first time a legitimate, united structure that has economic and political clout and is capable of promoting Armenia's national interests, preserving Armenian cultural values, and defending Armenian rights around the globe. Thank you.